what does it take to build and sustain a 150 year old brand in these complex and challenging times how do you build businesses that are meant to endure I'm Delsha Dirani and today I'm in conversation with David Kohler, Chair and Chief Executive Officer of Kohler Company, which is one of America's oldest and largest privately held firms. And we're going to ask David about how he thinks about sustainably growing Kohler further. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18, David. It's lovely to have you here with me today. Well, thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. So I'm going to launch straight into my questions Great. for you. And we're going to talk about, of course, Kohler. It's a legacy brand, been around for 150 years, uh, grown into this global, diverse juggernaut. So I'm going to sort of zoom out a little bit right now and just ask you, what does it take, in your view, to build enduring brands? Oh, it takes a lot of hard work. And we've been fortunate enough over 150 years to be blessed with generations of great associates with passion and drive and tenacity to stick to it and build this company. So it starts there. And then it also takes a, a discipline, a, a work ethic and a commitment to a set of values that you stick to over a long period of time to be a disciplined investor that doesn't you know, err from a, a course and believing in our mission of gracious living and then sticking to a set of guiding principles that really guide everything we do which the first one is living on the leading edge of design and technology. And that one's probably most important because it's about innovation. Mm -hmm. And you can't thrive across changing market conditions unless you innovate and you grow and you have an entrepreneurial spirit and passion to change along the way. And that's really been a core ethos of the company over that period of time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you mentioned people, of course, and your associates. Uh, so let me just then uh, follow up on that question with uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, sustainability is a key operating principle for any responsible company mm -hmm. striving for financial success. Um, so in your view, um, what are some of the things that are top on your agenda right now? Is the new bottom line people, planet, profits for you? It absolutely is. We're very committed to people, planet, profits, and sustainability as a company. In fact, uh, this year in 2023, we just launched our second ESG report. And as a private company, we don't have to publish an ESG report. But we think it's so important to lead by example and be a very accountable organization. So important to us on the sustainability front is reducing our environmental footprint and also creating more environmentally friendly products. So back Back in 2008 already, we made a commitment to be net zero by 2035, well before other companies were making such a commitment. And since that time, we've reduced our environmental footprint in all areas from 40 to over 50 percent. So we've made excellent pro progress with a goal of 3 percent reduction per annum. We've also focused on more environmentally friendly products and design for environment. So today we have over a billion dollars of revenue every year from more environmentally friendly products. And they could be a water conserving product or an energy reducing or conservation products. So a variety of areas across our product line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's interesting because earlier in the year also, um, Laura Kohler became the chief sustainability officer and diversity officer. Yes. And the very, uh, the very first sort of job, the right. role was not, didn't exist before, right? Yeah. So what was, the, what was the thinking behind that? Oh, it's so important. Uh, mm -hmm. for, it's so important for our company. And, and Laura is an amazing ambassador and leader for that area. And we thought it would be most important to really take a person, a senior executive, let alone a, my sister Family. and a principal mm -hmm. shareholder to really lead this and drive it. And what we found most interesting about it is that it's really not just about internal progress that we're driving as a company, but so many of our customers, large customers around the world are so interested in our path to sustainability and what they can do as an organization to be more sustainable and how we can work with them on products and technologies on the leading edge to be more sustainable in the work of the projects that they're building. So she's really been drawn out of the company into the markets and with our customers all over the world really talking about sustainability. And that's what's most exciting is that we're creating a multiplier effect on our work 
in sustainability across our customer base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're connecting the dots, of course, between purpose and profits. Exactly. Right. So is that is that uh, still a challenge, perhaps, to um, you know, there's convince always, people? Uh, well, you there's know, always a, there's always a tension, but we've always believed that you should be sustainable without compromise that you can find a path forward where you're doing things that are better for the planet as well as better for the customer and better for uh, the company. And so you can find a way where more sustainable products are cost effective, actually can save money and be the right decision on all fronts. So we very much believe in not compromising. Absolutely, absolutely. And since you started speaking about global markets, of course, let's let's talk about you know how Cola has fared this past year. Uh, how has what's your report card for the company? And then I'm going to ask you a little bit about India as well. But let's begin with your report card for for Cola. Well, we're doing very well. Uh, 2023 will be a record year for our company, uh, over nine billion dollars in size and uh, nicely profitable as a business. So we're very pleased. Uh, with our performance around the world. And the star of the show is right here in India. The Indian market for us is performing extremely well. We're growing double the market size and the Indian market in general is just on fire. Uh, the GDP growth that we're seeing in this country this year and projected to go forward is so strong that this is really prime time for India in the, in the global marketplace. So it's one of our most important markets today and for the next decade going forward uh, as a company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of your peers, of course, a lot of global CEOs have built in, uh, this decade as India's decade. So um, uh, I'm taking the liberty to assume that you believe that too. Absolutely. I think it's beyond this decade. I think the future is very bright for India. And it's great to see the investment in the infrastructure as a country and making it a more business friendly environment. Uh, so we're really very pleased to actually not only market here, but manufacture here. Some of our best manufacturing facilities in the world, state of the art process technology and very well managed are right here in India. And they're not only producing for India, uh, designs that were created for India. We're also exporting out of those facilities and they're excellent export facilities as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any, any thoughts that you can share with me on your investment plans and what you, have, what you have in mind for the India market? What's exciting is that we're investing really in all of our lines of business here. In our kitchen and bath business, we have our manufacturing plants in Gujarat. We have a faucet manufacturing facility and a ceramics manufacturing facility. We have plans to expand both of those facilities in the next year and the next 36 months. Then we're also investing in a new electric vehicle control facility in Pune. We have a, a company called Curtis Instruments there that makes controllers for off-highway electric vehicles. And then in Aurangabad, we have a diesel engine manufacturing facility today. And this year, we're breaking ground on a brand new diesel manufacturing facility to expand that capacity for domestic consumption as well as global export. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's interesting because uh, the EV market, for instance, your you know, electric future, right? So it's, yeah. it's a fascinating. It is effect. exciting. Yeah. And, yeah. and what we're seeing is, you know, most people talk about the on highway EV market, but our controllers and components are for off highway construction equipment, material handling equipment, mm -hmm. agriculture equipment. All of those are getting electrified powertrains as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let me just uh, get your views on some of the consumer insights that you gather that are informing your strategies on the living spaces front. Tell me what you are seeing. What are the key trends that are sort of feeding back into everything from your marketing to your product innovations, your services? What's happening? Well, we love uh, the Indian consumer because they have a design sensibility, a fashion sensibility, and they're courageous. Uh, for instance, color, our color mix here in India is one of the strongest anywhere in the world. And we've designed specific colors like peacock that are appropriate for the Indian market. Our finish mix on faucets is incredible here in India. There's, a, there's just an appetite for beautiful variety of finishes. Aesthetic. So we love the aesthetic variety uh, that is needed here in India. And we've been a trend leader in that space. We also see a great appetite for digital products or leading edge smart products. So intelligent toilets or smart showers all of this has been important in a fast-growing segment here in India for us at the high end of the market. Mm -hmm. Consumers here also care about uh, sustainability. So we have seen 
great interest in our work on sustainability and people looking for more sustainable products, water conserving products, for instance. So that's been an important trend in the market. Uh, so all of these things together have, have made us uh, very busy. One of the things that we do here in India, we have a design studio here in India, and we're designing products for the Indian market mm -hmm. right here in India. And that's been a critical factor to our success. Absolutely. Let me just ask you to sort of dig into perhaps sort of the luxury segment. Uh, do you see India sort of stand out or different in any way from some of the global trends that you're seeing? Of course, consumption is growing here. It's, uh, it's a young population. It's a growing population. Um, more spending power as we, as we sort of, you know, progress as a nation. So are you seeing sort of India perhaps stand out a little bit more in comparison to perhaps some of your global markets? A hundred percent. We think there's a strong appetite today at the premium and luxury end of the market, and that's only going to continue with the demographic trends that we see here. So there's a, a great appetite. I think if you're in that space, in the premium luxury space, whether it's consumer products or whether it's the travel industry over the next decade, it's going to be an incredible time here in India. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a slightly sort of, uh, I'm going to sort of uh, go on to another question here. I know that you play golf, and of course, True. Cola has a lot of interest in golf and golf is sort of catching up a little bit yeah. here any plans there anything to do uh, anything to do with golf anything you're planning in global markets like india uh, we would love to put a golf course in India one day. Uh, we have four championship golf courses at our destination, uh, Kohler, in Kohler, Wisconsin, where our headquarters is. And then we also own the Old Course Hotel in St. Andrews, Scotland, the birthplace of golf, mm -hmm. and a golf course there. Right. And uh, so when we come to India, we, we know there's a great passion. It's not a big market for golf yet. But those who golf are very passionate about it. So we think there would be opportunity over time. So maybe one day you'll see a resort destination from us centered around championship golf. That would be an exciting opportunity. But we haven't found the right land opportunity or, or place to do it just yet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, uh, I would love to perhaps sort of talk a little bit about your journey as well. So you have, of course, you served in roles in marketing and sales. Tell me, how, how have those experiences for you uh, given you perhaps a sort of a deeper appreciation for the role of marketing in, in being a growth engine for uh, yeah. brands and businesses? You know, Kohler's been an incredible company to work for as a marketer. So that's what I concentrated in in business school. And to come into a company that really cares about marketing is driven by innovation and product strategy, a company that believes in building strong distribution, a company that believes in building a strong brand with excellent brand equity, all of these things are, are wonderful for a marketer. And then a company that believes in being bold and having the courage and imagination to do exciting things on the brand building front, whether it's a Kohler Experience Center in, in Bangalore or around India, or whether it's bold advertising and, and marketing. Um, these are all exciting things. So it's been a playground for me, uh, but you know certainly a lot of work. But it's been exciting because we're a company that that has high ambition. We think we can do anything we set our mind to do. Uh, so we've been able to do a lot of fun and creative things over the years in building this brand around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you perhaps maybe uh, give me, uh, say, your uh, top two or three um, examples of ad campaigns or marketing campaigns over the years that have uh, that have really sort of ticked all the boxes for you and something that stands out for you? Well, I think we've always been known for the most creative advertising campaigns in our industry. And I think if people step back and look at which company was instrumental in taking what was historically a commodity business yes. and turning it into a fashion business, a design-led business, a lifestyle business, mm -hmm. It's our company, and we did that with leading edge products and technology first and foremost, because you have to back up the advertising with that. Right. But then since the 20s, we were doing creative advertising about an, a lifestyle that people could achieve in a very aspirational way, but our ads were always artistic and creative and had stopping power. So you would open a magazine and you would stop and want to absorb yourself in that ad or watching TV 
when a Kohler ad came by, and that still is true today. We set a very high standard for the level of creativity that we want to see in all of our forms of advertising. Mm -hmm. Also, in uh, we do other creative things. The, the Kohler Experience Centers are a great example. India is the only country in the world we have three Kohler Experience Centers, and we will build more. And these are incredible, immersive experiences where you can see the ride ray of all the products that we manufacture as a company. Right. And so it, it really is like a candy store for the senses because people really don't understand what is all possible in their kitchen and bathroom. So it's it's wonderful to bring it all together and then also have the, the technical side of being able to explain uh, how the products work and how they're different. So those have been an important part of our strategy, as well as building Kohler stores or showrooms. So just this year in India, we're adding 160 showrooms. So our network of, of showrooms, almost mm -hmm. a thousand across India is vast. And that's true in, in the major markets we serve around the world. So bringing the brand to life in those types of venues is very important. Absolutely. And then we do events uh, like in India, we'll do bold design awards and, and other awards, which really celebrate the trade. They celebrate architects and designers, and uh, that's very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And open up the imagination. Exactly. Uh, so uh, again, I'm going to ask you something uh, a little bit personal. Uh, as, as sort of the leader of this legacy company, 150 years old, celebrating 150 years this year, um, so many people around the world that perhaps, you know, have I, maybe generations that have worked with Kohler. Uh, what, uh, what excites you even now about, uh, about running the company and what keeps you up at night? Well, everything excites me about running the company, almost everything. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we look at the business even after 150 years at, at, with fresh eyes and we love uh, the creative process of setting strategy and, and product strategy and innovation more than anything we do. Uh, so that really energizes us, you know, pioneering new frontiers, new products, new categories of products that we'll be launching over the next number of years. So that's really exciting to us, um, as well as pioneering new markets like India. Just the excitement of, of how this brand is taking off across the country is an incredible, inciting journey for us to, to navigate and build. So all those facets really uh, keep me excited. And then, you know, in terms of what keeps me up at night, whenever I feel that we're not moving in part of our business as fast as we should be to really lead markets, um, then I get, you know, concerned and deeply think through that uh, because, you know, it's a, you know, this is a business where you have to keep moving with aggressive pace to continue to lead over the next 150 years. Absolutely. One last question, David, for you. What's your, what's your business outlook for the year? I know, I mean, we're facing economic headwinds globally. Um, what's your outlook? I actually feel quite positive about the global outlook. Certainly there are, are challenges market by market, but I think in the next number of years, you're going to see continued growth in global GDP, and there'll be bright spots like India of markets that are truly outperforming the rest of the world. But I think we're manage, managing through the inflationary environment well, mm -hmm. and I think uh, the slowdowns that we're seeing in the markets like the U.S. will be more muted and more shallow. So I think we're, we're positioned well uh, for growth in the next number of years. It's optimistic. Yes. Cautiously, perhaps, but always, optimistic. Always optimistic. Lovely chatting with you, David. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to be with you.